and 7.8 from Math 99. And in this section, we're doing direct and inverse relationships. And so what we're going to do is look at a couple different ways that a um, couple of variables can be related to each other. So the, the first one is direct. And direct is, is also sometimes called proportional. Um, so if I have an X and a Y, and let's say I had like uh, just some X values, and then Y was, if, when X is 1, Y is 5, when X is 2, Y is 10, um, and then when X is 3, Y is 15, you can see the direct relationship here is, is just times 5. So if the relationship is if you take X, multiply it by something, and get Y, that's a direct relationship. So the, the structure for a direct relationship looks like this. Y equals some number times X. In this case, it would be Y equals 5 times X. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Direct looks like that. Uh, inverse relationships are a little bit different. Inverse relationships are often uh, like sharing problems or when you have to uh, distribute things among other, other people. Um, inverse relationships look like this. So one example of an inverse relationship, when x is 1, y is 12, or when x is 2, y is 6, or when x is 3, y is 4, um, or when x is 4, y is 3, 6, 2, 12, 1. Notice in this table that x and y always multiply to the same amount. They always multiply to 12. Another way to think about that is, is if I took x and divided 12 by it, I would get y. Notice how 12 is 12 divided by 1. Um, and, and 4 is 12 divided by 3. So inverse relationships. My constant, my, my k, my k is my constant, is divided by x. Um, and also, x times y is equal to that, that same constant. So that's the, that's the basic idea between direct and inverse relationships, when I'm having two things related to each other in these two ways. So I'm going to leave that on there, make a little space here, and do some examples. So if I have a, uh, the, the way that the language works in these is I would say y varies directly as x. That means I have a direct relationship where x is my input, y is my output. It, it means this. So I'm going to say that that happens and uh, y equals 20 when x equals 4. So what would y be when x equals 11 in that same relationship? So you can do this um, Algebraically, you can also do it with common sense. Is if it's direct, uh, x times something will give me y. So notice that this is times 5. That means my multiplier is 5. So if I know x, I multiply it by 5, I get y. So if my x is 11, multiply it by 5, y would be 55. Let me show you the algebraic way to do this. y varies directly as x. Let me color here. Um, so y varies directly as x. There's my model y equals 20 when x equals 4. So I'm going to plug those in. y equals 20 when x equals 4. Solve that. Divide both sides by 4. So it looks like k must equals five, equal 5, which we could just do by inspection here. So now my model is y equals 5 times x. And then I can answer this question. What is y, equals when x, what is y equal when x is 11? Well, y would equal 5 times 11, which would be 55. Let me do another example like this. I'm going to stick with y varies directly as x. And in this one, I'll say uh, y equals 30 when x equals negative 15. What does x equal when y equals 8? So again, you can kind of do this one by inspection. Um, if it's a direct variation, x times something would give me y. So that means that uh, my multiplier, my k value, is negative 2. So y would be 8. So I have to multiply some x by negative 2 to get to 8. So it looks like it should be negative 4. All right, let me do it algebraically. 
y varies directly as x. Here's my model. Now I'm going to fit it to find my k, to find my multiplier, my constant of variation, is what that's called. y is 30, x is negative 15. Just plug those in. Solve for k, so divide by negative 15, and it looks like k is negative 2. So that means my model here is y equals negative 2 times x. Now I can solve any situation you throw at me with this. y equals 8. What is x? Divide both sides by negative 2. x equals negative 4. That's my basic idea with direct. So let me do some examples about, about inverse as well. So same sort of, same sort of thinking. I have, a, I would say something like y varies inversely as x. There's my input, there's my output, there's my, my model, the, the way that the relationship works. And uh, when y equals 2, x equals 10, what must y equal when x equals 4? So I'm going to do this one. Uh, I'm going to do this one now just by just thinking about it, and then I'll do it algebraically. Y varies inversely as x. Um, so two ways to think about that. One of them is y is something divided by x. But you might see it's 20. You might not. Um, another thing to think about when it's inverse, if you multiply x and y, you get k. Notice that's different than, than the direct relationship, x times k is y. In the inverse relationship, if you multiply them both together, you get k. So let's see, x times y is 20. So my x and my y must always multiply to 20. So if x is 4, 4 times what would give me funny? If funny would give me 20, it must be 5. Let me do it algebraically. y varies inversely as x. So my model is y equals k over x. And I know specifically some values. y is 2 while x is 10. If I wanted to solve this for k, multiply both sides by 10. k is 20. So you can see why x times y must equal that constant. So now my equation in this situation is 20 divided by x. Now I can use it to solve any situation. If x is 4, plug it in. y equals 20 divided by 4, which is 5. Great, let me do one more example uh, like this. Again, y varies inversely as x. And in this case, I'm going to say uh, y is equal to 30 and x is equal to 2. What must y equal when x is equal to 5? So let me common sense this and then I'll algebra it. So common sense is in an inverse relationship, they must multiply to the same amount. So 30 times 2 is 60. So that means that I want something times 5 also giving me 60. And if I divide both sides by 5, then like uh, 12. Y should equal 12. All right, let me do it algebraically. Uh, y equals k over x. I'm told my model y varies inversely as x. I've got some values, so I can shove them in there and figure out what my constant is so I can get my model. If I solve for k, I multiply both sides by 30. So 60 equals k. So that means my model must be y equals 60 divided by x. Now I can solve any situation. Uh, it looks like x is 5. y equals 60 divided by 5, which is 12. So we have this direct relationship model and this inverse relationship model. Now um, notice that for direct, this says uh, y varies directly as x. Um, and we can have any two things um, related to each other directly. But sometimes it's not quite just as straight. So for example, I could say something like um, y varies directly as the square of x. So notice what happens here then is y is still varying directly as something, but it's not varying directly as, as x, but as the square of x. So that changes my model to this. 
um, y varies directly at something times the square of x. I could have the same thing with an inverse relationship. Um, y varies inversely as the square of x. And it doesn't have to be the square. It could be the square root. It could be the absolute value. It could be anything. But we'll just do the square of them on these. So that changes our models this way. Let's do a couple examples like that then. So this first one is going to be a y varies directly as the square of x. And so uh, when y equals negative 72, x equals 6. And if that's true, I want to know what y equals when x equals 3. So let me start with what I know. Y varies directly as the square of x. So my model is going to be some direct variation, you know, a constant times something. But something happens to be the square of x. Gives me y. Let me plug in some values here so I can get that constant. So y is negative 72. K is what I'm trying to find. X is 6. And 6 squared is 36. So this is k times 36. And if I go uh, negative 72 divided by 36, I should get negative 2. So my, my multiplier is negative 2. My k is negative 2. So let me rewrite my model with that information. y equals negative 2 times x squared. y is varying directly as the square of x, where the constant of uh, proportion or the constant of change is negative 2. So now I can answer this question, what's y when x is 3? So now I plug those in. I don't know what y is, negative 2, but I know that x is 3. 3 squared is 9. Notice that I'm squaring the 3 and then multiplying it by negative. y equals negative 18 when that happens. Let me do an, another example like that for, for direct. So I'm going to erase this. And the next example then is... Um, same model, y varies directly as the square of x. y equals 30 uh, when x equals 2. So the question is going to be, what is y equal to when x equals 6? So let's set it up. y varies directly as the square of x is our model. y varies directly, so it's the constant times something, as the square of x. Let me plug in my values so I can get that constant of proportionality value. 30 equals k times x is 2, 2 squared. 30 equals k times 4. So divide by 4. And it looks like k must be, uh, I think it's 70, I'm sorry, 70, 7.5. Yep. Good. So now I know my model is y equals 7.5 times x squared. So now I can solve anything you throw at me in this situation, and it's going to be this. So I want to know what y is when x is 6. And again, notice I'm squaring x and then multiplying it by, it should be 7.5 by 7.5. 6 squared is 36. Multiply that by 7.5, and I get 270. All right, so let's do some examples like this now for an inverse relationship. Same sort of thing. Y varies inversely as the square of X. And uh, our first thing is going to be Y is equal to 12 when X is 2. What's Y equal to when X is 6? So let me start with what I know. I know that Y varies inversely, so constant divided by something. And that something is the square of x. Cool. So now I'm going to use this point to figure out what that what that constant is. So y is 12 when x is 2. 12 equals a k divided by 4. Multiply both sides by 4 to get that k value. It looks like k is 48. Great, so that means my model then is y equals 48 divided by x squared. Sorry about this. This is this was supposed to be a question mark. I know it looked like it too. Now I know my model. 
I can solve it for this situation. So y is equal to 48 divided by 6 squared, which would be 48 divided by 36. Let me grab my calculator. 48 divided by 36. 1.3 repeating. So you might say 1.3 repeating, or if you wanted to leave it as a, as a fraction, you could say 4 thirds as well. Or 1 and a third, all those are good answers. So y is 4 thirds when x is 6 in that model. Let me do one more inverse example as well. So I'm going to erase these and then do another one. So uh, y equals 30 when x equals 2. Uh, what does y equal, question mark, when x is 6? So my model, y varies inversely as the square of x. And I have this point that's going to help me figure out what that constant, that k constant is. So 30 equals k divided by 2 squared, uh, which means 30 equals k divided by 4, uh, multiplied by both, both sides by 4. K is 120. So that means my model is y equals 120 divided by whatever x squared is. All right, well, look at this. I like x being 6 for some reason, but I'm going to do it. Uh, when x is 6, what's y? Let me plug it in. y equals 120 over 6 squared, which is 120 over 36. So 120 divided by 36 is... Uh, 3.3 .3 repeating. You could write that as 3 and 1 third. You could write that as, uh, what, 10 thirds. All those are good answers. So, so here's a situation that has a direct relationship in it. We see, we see that something varies directly. So we're going to write a model for it and then, and then solve the question. So it says that the tension in a spring, which is T, varies directly as the distance D. What that means is um, t must equal some value times d. t varies directly as d. Um, and then it gives us some information, t63 when the stretch is 3. So let's figure this out. The tension is 63. It um, doesn't say what the units are. When the distance is 3. So from here we can figure out what that constant is for that particular for that particular Bring. If we go uh, 63 divided by 3, we get 21. So the relationship between the tension and the distance that's been stretched on this string is 21 times the distance. So notice what we did. This gives us the model. The specific data helps us figure out the actual constant in that model. And then we can answer the question, what's the tension when the stretch is 5 inches? When D, that's the stretch, is 5. So that means that t must equal 21 times 5, and if I go uh, 21 times 5, 105. So t equals 105 when d is 5, and there's my answer right there. So let's have another example here. Uh, the intensity of a light source I varies inversely. So we have some sort of inverse relationship, but it looks like it's not just varies inversely. It varies inversely as the square of the other of the other piece. So that means the intensity of a light source, that's our I. It looks like that's in foot candles. And that uh, varies inversely. So it's some number divided by the square of the distance. So there's our model right there. That was given from here. When four feet away, the intensity is nine foot candles. So the intensity is 9. We want to find k and the distance is 4. So let's see. That means that 9 is, is k over 16. So I can multiply both sides by 16 to get my k value. Let's see. 16 times 9, 144. So that means for this particular light source, my intensity is equal to 144 divided by the distance squared, right? Because it varies inversely as the square of the distance. So we want to know what the intensity would be if you're only three feet away instead of four feet away. And before we go any further, um, if I get closer to the light, 
if that distance uh, decreases, the intensity should increase. And I, th I think that'll happen with the model because we're dividing by that distance. So let's see what happens. Intensity equals 144, and then the distance is three feet away, so over three squared. So it looks like I'm going to go 144 divided by 9, and that's uh, 16. So yeah, the intensity would be 16, and they, they told me the units are foot candles. And it makes sense that this would be more than what the intensity was when I was farther away. So as you're given these problems a try, um, particularly the ones where you're creating a model off of a situation, read carefully how it's varying, what the variance is. Set up your model. Plug in some data to get your constant. Rewrite your model with the constant. And then you can solve anything they give you for the rest of the situation. Hey, don't forget to email if you have any questions while you are working through this unit.